no matter what pen you use, fountain pen, fine liner, few day pen, there are two key things that you need to understand to start mastering your ink sketching. And in this video, we're gonna talk about those two things, two simple steps, two simple ideas, which will get you on the path to feeling more confident, more able to sketch anything from urban scenes to landscapes to people. So what are these two crazy concepts? Well, the first one is my favorite, my long-standing favorite, and that is the idea of shapes. Any scene can be broken down into shapes. Now, especially with ink sketching, we are jumping in very often without any pencil. So the ability to simplify and find in our, in our scene simple shapes will mean that we are more able to draw what we see not what we think we see. That means instead of trying to draw an entire house or a face at once, we break it down. So I've got a, a scene here, which I might break down into firstly some rectangles. And then I find there's a tiny rectangle in the middle. That's like a ledge. Then underneath, we've actually got a really big rectangle. If I try to draw this whole house all at once, I'm gonna run into all sorts of errors of proportion, errors of measuring, but by breaking it down into little shapes, I can constantly cross check, you know, how big is this one compared to that one? This one should be about three times that size. This one should be a little bit smaller than this one. And then I can see that, you know, I've got four rectangles to fit in this rectangle. And just by doing that, we can get a scene which won't be perfect. It's never gonna be perfect if we're a confident ink sketcher because what we're doing is we're jumping straight into our scene. But what it will be is a good representation, a good representation which doesn't take a huge amount of stress, doesn't cost us the world, and we can just get on and do. Absolutely ideal for urban sketching, for life drawing, for getting out there, sketching quickly and having fun, and along the way learning something, developing ourselves. But I know what you're thinking as you look at this. It's pretty boring, isn't it? Yes, I have built up a sort of picture of this scene, but it's lacking so much life. And why is it lacking life? Well, it's lacking life because we've only thought about one of the concepts. We thought about how we can take a scene and we can make it easy to sketch. So here, it's easy to sketch because everywhere I look, I find different shapes. And those different shapes, they build up rather nicely to create our scene. But I've only thought about one concept, and that is the concept which makes it easy, not the concept which makes it good, which makes it really fun, which makes it exciting. So what is that next concept? What is the key concept, the magic here? That is the magic of texture, and texture comes in two parts. So here, look, all my shapes are boring, bold, big, just simple shapes. I may as well have just drawn these shapes I drew for you at the beginning. But we can make shapes interesting. We can find a house. Instead of drawing this house with bland, boring shapes, we can go, you know what? This house is old. It's got character. So this initial shape can be made interesting by focusing on texture from the very first contour. Instead of drawing a bland rectangle, we get the texture perhaps underneath of some grass. And Yes, a little trigger warning here to people watching who like realism. I'm going to be taking some liberties here to demonstrate the ideas that we're going to be talking about for the rest of this video. So look, for example, if we take these little planters and we give them swirly lines, they feel overgrown. If we take the windows and we make them discontinuous, perhaps they feel like broken lines, like broken windows. If we make these windows at the bottom bold and dominating, suddenly there's this ominous feeling coming from that dark, dank texture, that heavy contrast. Scenes can also be defined by the contrast around them. So if we contrast our shapes of our main feature, the main house, which is now looking a bit like a haunted house, with a more modern feeling, more strict house in the front, that contrast of texture is going to pull it apart, make it sort of more obvious that this is something interesting going on. In the background, we can simplify with some linear hatching. Again, that feeling will push 
our house forward. So hopefully you can understand there are loads of ways that we can develop. And as we continue to develop the texture, suddenly this scene becomes way more interesting than the bland scene we produced at the beginning. And that begs the question, what kind of things can you do to increase the texture in your lines? Well, there's loads of different techniques. The first thing is to think about the pen you're using. So now I'm using a few day pen instead of using the sort of fine liner that I was using before. That gives us so much more variety and variation. If you don't want to use a few day pen or you don't have one, you could use two different fine liners. You could use a fountain pen, which has a flexible nib, and that's going to allow you to open up your line work. There are also other techniques. So think about how to use hatching. Hatching is a great way to explore your scene and you can use simple linear hatching. You can mix it up with cross hatching to really create an emphasis of light and dark. You can create scribbles on the page. You can also create other textures through repetitive marks and creating you know, walls through building up all those individual wall marks. The key here is to keep things fun, light, loose and flexible, not get too bogged down. If we come back to our scene here, we can see using really simple hatching will pull our fun version of our house forward. So suddenly it jumps in front of the background. It jumps in front, pushes forward. And that's just a really simple texture technique we've used to divide up the layers, divide up the background, the less interesting, and bring in the focal point instead. But there are more ways that we can use texture in our sketching. There are more ways we can use our shapes in our sketching as well. If we take a natural scene, for example, we could draw some cliffs and we can start by finding natural shapes. Those shapes don't have to be rigid. So here we've got natural shapes. They're approximately rectangles, but they're rectangles with character with something extra going on. Within those shapes are smaller shapes. And within those smaller shapes, if you wanted to keep this going, would be even smaller and smaller shapes. Once we have the essence of the scene, again, despite the contours looking interesting, looking textured, still pretty boring, isn't it? So we can start finding some of those simple hatching techniques now to bring out the light, the shadow, to suggest texture. So we can apply simple bits of hatching now to different shapes to pull them apart, to create the depth from the front. Maybe we think, you know, the cliffs now, they're looking great, but there needs to be something else going on elsewhere. So let's pull out shapes of a cloud. And a key here is the shapes can be wrong to start with. I did this far too loose and it didn't fit with the rest of the image. But because I was gentle, I'm able to come back. So I can come back and be more specific and I can also use hatching. So these contour lines I'm drawing around. It's like the contours you find on an OS map, contours you find on a walking map. You build up the idea of shape through these lines which match the outer contour, the outer line, the outer limit of a shape. But also we can contrast that with really simple linear hatching now, again, to create a different texture, to flatten an area. So this linear hatching almost makes the sky flat. It almost removes the texture whilst making it interesting and whilst celebrating our use of ink. Now, don't forget that when we're using ink, it's not all about lines. We think we get our pens out and they're great for line work. And they are. They're amazing for line work. But we can have more fun than that. We can bring out the water as well. We take some water-soluble ink. And a great example of water soluble ink is normal fountain pen ink and also pens like OptiFlow pens and uh, gel markers, things like that, are all brilliant water soluble pens. And you could use any cheap brush and suddenly we have a load of new ways to build up our texture on our page. And we can take that into our sketches. So let us find a couple of shapes which outline uh, a person and their dog. This person and dog happens to be uh, Tash, my partner, and Betty, our dog. And from finding these shapes with a bit of a Lamy pen and Lamy ink, we can then just use our water to immediately create texture, to create depth, to create darkness, to create fun, and create a scene which comes to life. 
And there it is. So two really simple concepts to get your head around. The idea of shapes, the idea of texture. And in no time, you will be drawing far more interesting sketches with way more confidence. And that's all you have to do. And if you want to find out more about these kind of ideas, about these kind of concepts in sketching, join me on this channel, subscribe, watch this next video. And also, if you really want, you can join me on sketchleaves.co.uk where I have really in-depth courses about ink sketching and ink and watercolour sketching. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.